watching the Red Zone Sports Show on Fox 5. Straight ahead in the Red Zone, UNLV builds on the mojo. We're building ourselves to a point we want to play championship football. And it starts with coming out and playing hard, fast, and physical with great focus from the get-go. The Rebels take care of business and manhandle Prairie View A&M. Head coach Tony Sanchez is in studio to break it all down. Plus, a look ahead to a crucial road game this week at Arkansas State. And an update on the new Fertitta football complex. It's time to ham it up for the cameras and deliver 30 minutes of UNLV football right now. You guys ready to go? This is the Fox 5 Rim Zone Sports Show, presented by R.C. Willie, your home, your way. Good evening. Welcome inside the Red Zone. Kevin Bollinger alongside UNLV head football coach Tony Sanchez. The Rebels now 2-1, best start in nine years for this football program. Starting to make that trajectory up. Yeah, no, it was good to see. Guys went out and handled their business, played a really good, solid first half. You know, got a little bit, you know, lackadaisical, a little bit in that third quarter. But, um, you know, I thought there was a lot of really good things. You uh, Like any game, a lot of things to clean up on. But, you know, we like where we're at right now and a tough game coming up this week. Let's get right to this one with highlights from the first half where the Rebels started fast and kept the foot on the gas. Play with great focus for four quarters. Play with great effort for four quarters. Own it together. Together we got to own it. We own it. We win the damn game. You know what you're capable of doing. Do you have the focus and intensity, intelligence, the alignment assignment technique, four quarters of fanatical effort to go with it? You guys with me on the shot. Make sure it jumps off the video that we're the hardest playing group on the field. You with me on that? GMB on three. One, two, three. GMB. You all walked in. You all in this fight together? Yes, sir. You guys ready to go? Yes, sir. For the third straight game, UNLV received the opening kickoff. And for the second straight game, they went right down and scored. Armani Rogers keeps it himself and weaves his way for 17 yards into Prairie View territory. On fourth and one at the 38, Xavier Campbell goes over the right side and moves the chains. It was third and 11 at the 24. Rogers back to pass and goes into the end zone to Drew Techman. He hauls it in for the touchdown. The point after was off the right upright and it was 6-0 Rebels. The defense quickly forced a three and out, including this big time hit by Jericho Flowers. On the punt, a bad snap, and Chad Magyar recovers it for UNLV on the one yard line. Two plays later, Lexington Thomas pounds it in from a yard out, and it was 13-0 Rebs. UNLV got the ball back at their own five, but Rogers drops the snap, and Prairie View recovers to set up a first and goal. But the defense holds tight, and on the field goal attempt, Montrese Johns breaks through and he gets the block to keep the goose egg on the board. Later in the first, Barry Hugh back to punt again, but another bad snap and UNLV would take over at the 12. On second down, Rogers rolls right and runs it in from six yards out to extend the lead to 20 nothing. The defense would force another punt, but Brandon Presley fumbles this time. The Panthers would recover in Rebel territory. The Roger man made sure nothing happened as he gets the sack on Jalen Morton and the Rebels would take over once again at their own 11. That is when the offense put together a 14 play 89 yard drive that chewed up six and a half minutes. On third and six at their own 15, Rogers connects with Kendall Keys for seven and a first. Third and seven at the 37, Rogers to Makai Stevenson for a first plus a penalty to boot. That would move the ball in the Panther territory. Third and three at the Prairie View 14. QB1 keeps it himself and watch the block from Thomas to free him up. That gets the ball down to the three. Two plays later, Rogers strolls in and smiles for the camera. It was 27-0. A scary moment with just over six minutes left in the half as Ty Jason Roberts is injured and laid still on the field. The medical team worked on him and carted him off the field to be taken to the hospital. The defense refocused and rallied. Prairie View had a third and goal at the two, but Morton fumbles the snap and Farrell Hester is there to pounce on it. Late in the half, UNLV would put together another drive with back-to-back -back big runs by Thomas and Rogers. That would set up the QB for another touchdown run 
untouched into the land of six. UNLV went into the locker room at halftime with a 34 nothing lead. Before we get to the breakdown of the game, what update can you give us on Ty Jason Roberts? Yeah, well, uh, you know, that was a scary moment, and uh, it actually, uh, he, he was taken to UMC right after that, and it was revealed that he actually had a spine fracture, so uh, he went into surgery, um, you know, we talked to the doctors afterwards, and uh, they're fully optimistic about a full recovery, um, he was responsive, and he's doing well now, resting up, so, you know, thoughts and prayers with Ty Jason, he's a great young man, and uh, it's a scary deal, but uh, doctors did a really good job at UMC, so really happy that... Uh, they, you know, they were able to work so fast and quickly on him, so we're real thankful. Yeah, the Rebel family, I'm sure, will be there to support uh, him and his family throughout the recovery. Uh, let, let's talk about the game now. UNLV with 180 yards rushing in, in the first half. You can open up a lot of things when you can run the football like that. You can. You know, again, it was another week of, uh, you know, running the ball. They, they were a little stingy, though. You know, when I went back and watched it today, we really, you know, it was tough sledding on first downs. You know, we had a lot of first downs where one yards, two yards, kept putting us in those second and long situations. Got to improve that a little bit. They did load the box up, you know, and give us some issues. Um, you know, we were great in the first half on third downs, and then the second half we were non-existent on them. So there's some things we definitely got to clean up. But, again, being able to be physical and run the football is going to give you a chance to win a bunch of games. Another fast start. I know every, every football coach in America, we got to get off to a fast start. Uh, sometimes that's easier said than done. But how important is it to get a team on their heels right away by going down scoring a touchdown. Well, it is, you know, I mean, you know, sometimes you want to defer, you know, in games, and but if you feel like, you know, you get the upper hand on it, and uh, if it's 50-50, sometimes you defer, but in that situation, two weeks in a row, we took the ball, wanted to go right down, see if we can put it behind the eight ball, and, you know, in our defense, you know, you got to talk about them. We talk about the offense a lot, but the defense, man, they stepped up in that first half. We put them in some real bad situations. Um, you know, that, that turnover we had inside the red zone where they were able to get a stop and then a blocked field goal was a big, big deal. Brandon Presley filmed on that punt. Again, they got the ball in the short field and they weren't able to get points out of it. Um, and then um, later on in the half, they actually, you know, got the ball down first and goal from about the three and held them two snaps in a row and then they fumbled. So that's three opportunities where they came away with zero points. You did get good field position because of some of the bad snaps in there, but yeah. I want to talk about the two series where you had the long drives. Uh, the first one of the game, 12 plays, 75 yards. Then later on, after uh, you guys get that, that block there, 14 plays, 89-yard drives. As a coach, I would assume that those are the ones that stand out because uh, that's what you have to do. Absolutely. You do that. Number one, you're, you're controlling time of possession. You're keeping your defense rested and off the field, and you're not giving their offense a chance to kind of find a rhythm. So that's really good. And, you know, that's what running the football gives you the ability to do. You know, obviously, we got to continue to improve in the passing game. I believe we were over 50% for the first time, which is good, but there were some errant throws out there and things we got to clean up. But, you know, when you're able to put those type of drives together, that, that, that's a good look. Let's go to the second half highlights now where things got a little sluggish, but UNLV did what they had to do to secure a comfortable win. Prairie View had the ball to start the second half, but once again, the defense shut the door and forced a punt. The offense went back to work and drove down the field. Thomas with a huge hole in a 12-yard gain. On fourth and one at the Prairie View 22, Lex breaks tackles and bounces outside for a gain of nine and a first at the 13. But the drive stalled and Evan Pantels missed a 24-yard field goal wide right. After UNLV got the ball back, Rogers throws an interception to give Prairie View good field position at the Rebel 41. The Panthers drove and scored for the first time. As Morton hits Tristan Wallace for the four-yard score, the lead was still 34-7. Another drive by the O. Rogers to Keys over the middle, and he takes a hit, but holds on for the first down. Later in the drive, Rogers runs and face plants into the turf, but he would be okay. On fourth down, UNLV changes kickers. Daniel Gutierrez comes out, but his kick is blocked and Prairie View had the ball in midfield. The Panthers would take advantage as Morton hit Zarian Holcomb for the touchdown. That would cut the Rebel lead to 34-14, heading into the fourth quarter. After a great punt by Hayes Hicken down the ball at the one yard line, Prairie View moved the ball. The chunk of the yardage coming on this catch and run by Kalen Riles for 61 yards to the 12. That would lead to a field goal to make it 34-17 with just over eight minutes to go. A big kickoff return by Brandon Presley set UNLV up, and Pantels was back in to kick a 32-yard field goal to push the lead back to 
on Prairie View's first play from scrimmage. The fumble. Roger Mann is right there to scoop it up, and UNLV was back in business. They close the door two plays later as Rogers gets his fourth rushing score of the game, tying a school record. He also broke a school record with his fourth 100-yard rushing game. The Rebels outrush Prairie View 318-99 and cruise to a 46-17 win. <laughs> we've been doing so far this every every week we're going to keep pushing and can't take any opponent for granted and just go out there and keep fighting we just need to keep our foot on the gas uh we got a good opponent playing arkansas state next week uh we go in there we get a win and we're really we're really getting the train rolling uh coming into league play after that so prairie view running back to Wanya talker came into this game with back-to-back 200 -back yard games you knew you had to stop him he ended up with 61 yards, only nine in the first half. Mission accomplished. Yeah, that was big time. You know, being able to make them one dimensional, they probably put the ball in the air more than they wanted to. You know, they've been leaning on that run game and, you know, they played some really tight games, you know, the first three weeks, you know, one win and then, you know, took Rice down to the wire. So it was really good to see us, you know, shut him down completely, you know, and then to put a big burden on the quarterback's shoulder. And I thought the defense did a really good job throughout the majority of the night. Special teams was, was ugly for both teams, but if focusing on the Rebels, Anything that you have to, to do going forward uh, to kind of get the, the ship right here? Yeah, you know, it's good to see Hickens punt well again. You know, I had another 40 yard average in a row, so that's good. But I tell you what, our, our field goals have been bad. You know, I mean, and Evans had a really good career here. He's just got to, you know, get some focus back. You know, missed a PAT, missed a field goal, actually missed a second field goal, but we got lucky with the penalty where we got to re kick it and had the miss against SC. So that's got to be cleaned up. And then can't have turnovers on special teams. You know, we gave that one right back to him. Got to do a better job there. So those are things we need to talk about and clean up. Um, you know, and we'll do that. Coach Burkett's doing a good job of, you know, getting better. Had the explosive kick return, which was good. You know, we got let it get a little too close for comfort, you know, for a minute. But uh, it was good to see us make that big return. But definitely room for improvement. Lost in the shuffle of everything that, that went on. Two offensive linemen uh, went down, Jerron mm -hmm. Codwell uh, and, and Max Brayton. What's the status on, on them right now as we move into the week? Well, I saw Jaron in the building earlier. He was in getting treatment. Um, you know, right now it looks like it's just a sprain. We'll see. He'll get an MRI tomorrow. So hopefully that's all it is. And, you know, so questionable for this week. Matt Brayton, same thing. He twisted his knee. Um, you know, all, you know, the initial look at those guys was didn't appear that anything was too damaging. Hopefully, it's just sprains. But until you get the MRIs, you just don't know. All right, we'll cross our fingers there because that's important, obviously, with the guys up front. We're just getting started here in the Reb Zone. Up next, we're going to look ahead to this week's game as UNLV looks to become Road Warriors with a game in Arkansas State. Preview just two minutes away as the Reb Zone rolls off. You're watching the Fox 5 Rev Zone Sports Show, presented by R.C. Willie. Your home, your way. After two home wins, the Rebels hit the road for a tough Saturday game in Jonesboro against Arkansas State. UNLV faces a stiff test on the road at Arkansas State on Saturday. The Red Wolves are a favorite to win the Sun Belt Conference and are coming off a 29-20 win at Tulsa. This is a team that is built around the offense, and that offense produces, led by fifth-year senior quarterback Justice Hansen. The reigning Sun Belt Offensive Player of the Year can flat-out sling it and has a lot of playmakers to get it to. So far this season, eight different players have caught touchdown passes. Against Tulsa, the Red Wolves racked up 415 yards of total offense. If there's one chink in Hanson's armor, it's his tendency to throw interceptions. Last season, he threw 16 picks. Defensively, Arkansas State has rolled in some new players, but is still stout. And outside of a loss at Alabama, has held its opponents to just 21 and 20 points. 
On paper, this looks like it's going to be a shootout with two high-profile offenses going head-to-head. -head. Defensive stops will be huge in this one, but if the Rebels play their game, it would be a huge road win to close out the non-conference part of the season. So this is the team that had a lot of buzz going into the beginning of yep. the year as, as one of the non-Power Fives that was going to make a lot of noise. This is a good team on both sides of the ball. Yeah, you know, they, they've shared at least, you know, their conference championship, I believe, five years in a row now, done a really, really good job. Hanson's a guy that'll play on Sundays. So it's a, this is a heck of a challenge. I mean, they'd be one of the, you know, upper elite teams in the Mountain West, too. So, you know, we just got to go in there and play our game. You know, we need to be physical, run the ball, be more efficient in the passing game, and continue to be disruptive to the passer on defense. You know, we've done a good job of putting pressure on the quarterbacks, getting sacks. And, you know, in a game like this, I think turnovers is going to be a key. You know, we had, we had three this last week, can't do that again, and we need to create some more. When you have a game where you, you know, two weeks in a row where you guys have had comfortable wins, but you have enough teaching moments, say, in the second half to get their attention this week leading up to this game, is that in a way a good thing to kind of make sure that there, there doesn't get to be a complacency factor that, hey, we're pretty comfortable with what we've done here at home? There's no doubt about it. You know, I mean, I think, again, you know, part of having that older, more mature group is that, you know, they, you know, they've got more than just this year to reflect on. They've got the past to reflect on, and they'll do a good job of that. But, yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of teachable moments. A lot of things we talk about standards that we you know hold ourselves to that we, we gotta you know show them that even this last week there are some things we you know we should have done much better, um, and then once they start watching Arkansas State on film, it'll be evident right away that you know we got a heck of a ball game and it's a tough trip. I mean you gotta go to Memphis. It's an hour drive to Jonesboro. You know you'll be playing out there and you know later game and you know heading on back. So it'll be a long trip, but you know what? Sometimes it's fun to go out there and you know get in you know a tough environment and have to take a little bus trip with it and kind of get you a little honorary. We're looking forward to that one. That's a 4 p.m. Pacific time kickoff from Jonesboro, Arkansas. Time for another short break. When we come back, we're going to show you the progress being made on the new football facility on campus and what its completion is going to mean to this program, taking things to another level. Stay with us. You're watching the Fox 5 Rev Zone Sports Show, presented by R.C. Willie. Your home, your way. Time to talk a little bit about the Fertitta football complex. It's going up on campus right there at the practice facility, and we have seen a lot of progress being made with that. We're going to show you some video and give us an idea of how far along this has come here in the last couple of months. Well, it's really going along. You'll see this video right here, and even since that video has been taken, which was last week, there's a whole lot more that has been done. So those guys have been working around the clock, and it, you see just how encompassing it is, how big this facility is. I mean, we're in the lead right now, and we're sharing it with multiple other teams and administrators and such, and that's about a 57,000-square-foot Building. This is 79,000, so just football. So it's needed. We're going to go to Arkansas State this week. They're, you should see the facilities or stadium. I mean, it's state of the art. And, you know, again, you look at the landscape and, you know, some of the people we got to compete against. This gives us a legitimate chance as we build this program to recruit at a high, high level and just shows people that, you know, we're serious about winning football here. There was some chatter about funding shortages and not being able to finish things off. Where are you at in terms of getting that, that final amount of money raised to, to finish this off or will it open? Uh, just kind of partially finished. No, we, we fully intend to, to open it up fully finished, but we do have to continue to fundraise. We're at 25 million right now. We need to get about another seven, but I know there's some great people out there still having some good conversations. And the project isn't done until uh, late spring, so you're talking about a May completion date. So between now and that time, you know, we need to continue to go out there and fundraise. And you know, that 25 million is great too. I mean, it's all community fundraised. I mean, it's all people just stepping up, saying, "Hey, we're going to make a difference." And and it's not just a difference in football. It'll change the whole athletic department. We're going to do the excellence center now in the lead that can't happen until we move out into this and we're providing our guys with academic resources they've never had we're going to be able to feed them I and mean, that's one of the biggest things too upstairs there's a dining hall uh, gone family helped out with that and you know being able to feed our kids the way Boise does late in the year and the way Colorado State does I mean it really impacts your ability to be successful when you know you're not you don't have a place to feed your guys year-round especially when you start getting into late October and November and bowl season in December you know if those guys are eating better you know, that's a huge advantage so between the academics the way our kids eat the way they train uh, the, you know the, the football classroom environment and then what it does for recruiting I'm telling you we've done a great job of recruiting and you see the talent we have now, um, this will take it to, to an exponentially different level. So we're excited about it. The landscape's changing with that and the new stadium coming in 2020. We're going to take one more final time out and then the UNLV plays of the week. But as we go to the break, here is a look at how other Mountain West teams did over the weekend. You're 
watching the Fox 5 Rev Zone Sports Show, presented by R.C. Willie, your home, your way. So final non-conference game coming up, an important one really, yeah. just to, to set the tone for, for the road, but also put yourself in a really good position as you head into the Mountain West. Yeah, no doubt. You know, this is, you know, that last game before you go into Mountain West play, you know, fighting for the West and all that. And, and it's a heck of an opponent too. It's not just, a, you know, just any road game. It's a road game against a team that's expected to be a conference champion. So it'd be a big deal for us, big deal for the Mountain West. So we just got to stay focused and, you know, make sure we have great intent all week and go out there and play a hell of a football game. Good luck in Jonesboro. We'll be with the team. We'll have complete coverage on Saturday night on Fox 5 News at 10. And then, of course, we'll break it all down next Sunday in the Reb Zone. Thanks for joining us for this one. We leave you with the UNLV Football Plays of the Week. Good night. Zone Sports Show was presented by RC Willie, your home, your way.